Uh, the start of the 2016-17 ice season uh, has been a long time coming. Just being able to finally be out on the ice was great. So we finally get out here to be able to start filming for a first ice episode and we've been wishing for cold, wishing for cold, wishing for cold and we got it. Uh, 31 below this morning when we got out on the ice. Uh, the wind is just howling. We, uh, we were actually talking about how you could hear it where we had parked. You could hear it whipping through the trees and it just sounded just the eerie and, and just heavy winds. And coming completely across the lake and gaining speed and those high gusts really made it tough for us to do anything outside. So being able to hunker down in the Eskimo ice shacks was huge today. Have a little bit of a heat and a little bit of a windbreak at your back was, was really big for us to be successful. <laughs> Ah, it's a good way to start off first ice, isn't it? Yeah, it is. We've been just itching for ice. We've been working these trade shows and store events and the ice exhibit down in St. Paul and Duluth and just talking ice fishing and talking ice fishing and talking ice fishing. And we're finally out here on Red, uh, you know, doing it up. Early ice walleyes. Uh, this is what it's all about right here. This is fun. Yeah. It, it really made the outside non-existent to a degree. Um, you're in the shack, you got the heater on, it's nice and warm, you're able to take off layers um, and still be able to, to comfortably fish knowing that it's whipping and as cold as it is. There he is. It's super cold out today so I'm going to get this guy back. You know, this season's been so full of anticipation so far. It seems like every year when we turn that corner from summer to fall, the ice season just can't come soon enough. This is my first time fishing This is my first time fishing Lake Ogibit and I think I kinda got the biggest fish. Oh there it is, there it is, there it is. What a beautiful fish. Have you ever seen the elusive Brazil? <laughs> Looking good, Mike. <laughs> All right. Gosh, look at that perch. Tell you what, it's my first time to Devil's Lake, and so far I've been greatly impressed. <laughs> Not a giant, but it's a start. No, he'll eat. <laughs> That's for I sure. Love perch. <laughs> Everybody has a spot in uh, their life that they they know what they want to be. Uh, me, I've kind of bounced around, and uh, I wanted to be a fisherman. I wanted to be an educator, and uh, you know, go out every day and enjoy what I do. Oh, there's a big old white bass. There we go. There he is. Oh, that's a nice one. 
beautiful fish. You know, getting out to these remote areas, you find a lot of beautiful looking fish. Just look at the coloration on that. Gorgeous. McDouble. <laughs> Those are some hogs. We just reeled this one up. This one. <laughs> I want to give you a high five, but I got a double. <laughs> this is so awesome. If you guys were coming or thinking of coming here, there's no better reason than that right there. Coming to you from Upper Red Lake, way north to the northernmost part of Minnesota, to the northwest angle. We're headed up to Lake Ogiebic. Here we are in Wisconsin. We're headed back up to Michigan. We're headed to Devil's Lake, North Dakota. We're headed up to Big Windy or Lake Winnipeg. There it is. Dude, you know, you get off the beaten path in these backwoods lakes where you gotta walk in access only and you get unmolested fish and crappies of that caliber in a small wilderness setting. This is so much fun. You know, one of the keys to perch fishing is the sun. Anytime that sun is coming out, like we've been talking, the fish just are gonna get more active, more aggressive. Freezing. Whoa, that's pretty nice. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Getting towards the evening here, and we're starting to get some of the, the bigger gills moving through. This is our initial target today, so we're happy to see them. favorite part about representing Eskimo is Eskimo is a family and they extend that family from their offices to us pro staff. Getting to meet the, the guys from Fish Addictions, um, you know, a couple years ago at the ice show, um, I never heard of them. One thing that's cool about Fish Addictions is it's just not one guy. Um, you've got some of the best anglers in the entire ice belt that are together as a group sharing knowledge, sharing spots, uh, sharing the passion. Now we're talking. Absolutely That's why we wonderful. come to Lake of the Woods. That's in exactly why. We were yeah. getting a lot of those 11, 12 inches, but when they come up bigger than that, they look. Pleasant pretty surprise. slow, absolutely, because <laughs> he didn't put up a fight at all. And, you know, being a part of that, uh, that's special. Uh, you know, it's, it's an honor, and uh, I really look forward to uh, seeing where the future goes. Are a nice Lake of the Woods crappie. That's a nice 
fish. You know, Lake Winnipeg is one of those destinations that we just look forward to going to every single year. I mean, what else could you ask for? You get out here and you have a chance at a fish of a lifetime every time one shows up on the screen. <laughs> Look at that belly. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh my goodness. Are you serious? <laughs> Welcome to Lake Winnipeg. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> guys, this is what we come here for. Yes! What an oh, that is an awesome time fish. On Winnipeg, and these fish are phenomenal. Greenback. <laughs> Boom. That's what we're looking for. It's so cool to be able to come out here with these this group of guys and just really enjoy the wilderness you know we're kind of going back to the roots here i grew up with my dad using a hand auger and that's all we've been running today because of the restrictions on this lake and it's it's just been a blast and when you're catching crappies like that who can complain man Thank you all the time, man. <laughs> Job, bud. Give me five. Yeah. You know the the opportunity to be able to bring the family up and do something like this is, is just extraordinary. You know, myself, I'm guiding all year long, doing tournaments throughout the summer, and there's times where I just I don't get to see them hardly at all. So an opportunity like this to get them all here together with us, fishing and having fun like this, and staying up here at the resort, it's just it's just wonderful for me. You know, pristine backwater lakes like this, you know, we, we weed through a lot of smaller fish, but then you come through and, and you get a couple of good ones. 
And look at that. beat this every time you get down there date nothing but 30 seconds and you got another one of these on if you're looking for a fish for the pan that's the one you want right there So just like that, I just released that last fish um, 30 seconds ago. That one came from closer to bottom. This one was suspended a little bit higher. Slippery bugger. Slippery. Ah. Yeah, nice little one. <laughs> Nailed it. There, hey. Oh, that's the auger. Where, Aaron? You brought my pop over here? Oh, there it is, hey. I didn't think I was gonna make it. There it is. And why'd you dip it? Pull it off a little bit. <laughs> I like my pop extra cold. Hey guys! <laughs> I'm glad I didn't decide to eat yet. <laughs> you know, it's crazy to think the amount of time that gets put into something like this. The thousands of miles on the vehicles, the thousands of miles on the sleds. You know, we're running from lake to lake to lake. We probably fished 20 to 30, maybe 35 destinations to get 13 episodes. This show is built with love for the sport. Whether you love the camera work, whether you love the fishing part of it, or whether you just love the whole rounded experience, and that's what we're giving you, and that's what you're gonna see here. I bet if I did this for like five minutes, it would be frozen. It's too icy here. <laughs> too icy here. <laughs> 